I am James Fletcher, the Minister for Sustainable Development, Energy, Science and Technology of St. Lucia. Um, for us, loss and damage is, is a fight that we have been battling with for some time now. And it really represents those slow onset impacts of climate change to which it is not possible to adapt. One of the first challenges we had was getting some of our Annex 1 countries, the developed countries, to, to recognize that a loss and damage was greater than adaptation. And, and, and that was a fight that was a little difficult, but I think we persevered and we, was, and we succeeded to the point now where we no longer debate the legitimacy of loss and damage in climate change negotiations. But now really the discussion is about where you place loss and damage. And when we talk about loss and damage, as I said, we're speaking about slow onset impacts. So we're speaking of things like sea level rise um, that will take away large areas of your coastline. And, and you really, you can't adapt to that. If you lose miles of, of land because of sea level rise, how can you adapt to, to loss of land? How can you adapt to um, salinization of your agricultural lands again as a result of sea level rise? So your, your agricultural lands that previously were fertile, were arable, are now useless because they are now saline. How do you adapt to ocean acidification because you have high levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? The ocean is one of those sinks for carbon dioxide, so as it absorbs more carbon dioxide, it becomes more acidic, and you now have coral bleaching taking place, you have challenges with um, calcification of, of some of your shellfish, and these are things that you cannot adapt to. You can't adapt to the complete loss of your, of your coral reefs, you can't adapt to the loss of your fishery. So for us, loss and damage is, is greater than adaptation, it's, it's a phenomenon in and of itself, and that's why we've always said that there must be some mechanism to deal with loss and damage for small island developing states. The other thing that you get is um, from extreme weather events. You know, we are seeing now more, more extreme and, and more severe storms hitting the Caribbean before you would associate damage with a Category 2 or a Category 3 hurricane. Now, Dominica, for example, this year, Tropical Storm Erica, um, brought damage to that country that, according to the Prime Minister of Dominica, has probably set its development back one or two decades. Um, in St. Lucia, Tropical Storm Debbie, some years ago, did the same thing. In St. Vincent, St. Lucia, and Dominica, in 2013, Christmas Eve, trough, just a trough, out, completely outside of our hurricane season passed, and six people died in St. Lucia, tens of millions of dollars worth of damage. Um, we, in all of the Caribbean islands, going through a very severe drought. These are all things that are impacting us, and there must be a mechanism to deal with, with the loss and damage that we get as a result of this. So that's why this loss and damage fight has been such a, an important one for us. It's here at the COP, we have seen progress towards, we have seen, we have seen some progress made in that regard. As I said, two years ago, we were discussing the legitimacy of, of, of loss and damage. Um, earlier this year, we were speaking about whether loss and damage could find its way in the text of the agreement. Now, we're actually looking at text that has been proposed by one of the countries that has had probably the biggest difference with us where loss and damage is concerned, and that's the United States, who have actually now proposed texts that can go into the agreement, and we've been discussing with our various partners, um, although loss and damage, although the small island developing states give birth to loss and damage, it now has many parents, and that's a good thing, because our partners in G77 have really rallied to our cause in loss and damage, and it, it, for us now to agree on a text, we have to ensure that everybody is comfortable with it. So we've been going through this process, having regular discussions with the United States, and we've now brought in some of the other partners like the European Union. Um, our leaders met with both Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and President Obama, and they both encouraged an early resolution to loss and damage, because I think we could send a very powerful signal to this COP that if loss and damage, which has been one of the most contentious issues, if we can arrive at a landing zone for loss and damage, then there really should be nothing stopping us from arriving at landing zones for so many of the other contentious issues. So we have been working very assiduously um, among ourselves and with our partners to try to, to resolve this issue. And it's looking much more soluble now than it looked um, a year ago or two years ago.